Let's make a map of the world with React and D3. The first thing we need to do is get the data that has the outlines of all the shapes of all the countries of the world. The second thing we need to do is load in that data. And the third thing we need to do is render that data using some kind of projection. So where do we get this data anyway? This World Atlas project gives us the data we need in the form of TopoJSON, and it's derived from the Natural Earth project. TopoJSON is a file format, which is an extension of GeoJSON that encodes topology. This means that, for example, if two boundaries share a line, that line, those points in that line, are only represented once, not twice. The practical upshot of this is that TopoJSON files are smaller than their GeoJSON counterparts. GeoJSON is an open standard format designed for representing simple geographical features. It's based on JavaScript object notation, or JSON. Here's an example of the GeoJSON format. This feature collection contains a bunch of features one of which is a point at the following coordinates, and this is latitude longitude. Other feature types include line strings, namely a series of coordinate pairs, and also polygons, which are series of series of coordinate pairs. Continents and countries, for example, could be represented by geojson polygons. Here's a nice visual representation of the geometry primitives, point, line string, and polygon. You could also have multi-part geometries like multi-point, multi-line string, multi-polygon, and geometry collection. So that's a brief summary of GeoJSON, the standard we'll be working with for making maps. Natural Earth is a public domain map data set. It was built through a collaboration of many volunteers. It's available at different levels of detail, suitable for different zoom levels. We'll be working with the so-called cultural vectors for things like countries, which are exposed to us in this package, World Atlas. How can we use this World Atlas? Well, it's published on NPM, therefore it's available in Unpackage. So we can go to unpackage.com slash worldatlas, and we've got to poke around a little bit in here to find the file that we need. Here we go, countries and land at the three levels of detail offered by Natural Earth. The highest level of detail for the countries is around four megabytes. And the lowest level of detail, meaning the most coarsely defined version, is about 100 kilobytes. The middle level of detail is around 756 kilobytes, so I think I'll use this one. If I click on this file here, this link, we get to this page, and from here we can click View Raw. And now this is the URL that we can use to pull in this data into our code. If you want to visualize geographic shapes and you have some files for them, like shape files or GeoJSON files, you can use this amazing tool here called MapShaper at mapshaper.org to convert those files into TopoJSON. For example, if you want to visualize Massachusetts school districts, you can download a shape file. Once you've got that shape file and the associated other files, you can just drag and drop that into MapShaper, and then click Import. Shapefiles typically contain a lot more points than you really need to get a sense of the shapes, and that's why they're often megabytes large. To make our files a lot smaller, we can use line simplification. Mike Bostock produced this really nice piece on line simplification in 2012. You can move your mouse, and it simplifies by removing points from the border of the US here. This percentage here 
is the percentage of the original points that remain. Isn't it amazing that with only 1% of the original points, you can still get the outline of the United States? Here's how this algorithm works. The original algorithm is called the Douglas Poiker algorithm. A subsequently developed and more popular algorithm for line simplification is Visvalingham's algorithm. Wikipedia has a nice visual representation for how the Douglas Poiker algorithm works. It works roughly by using this band and checking if points fall within or outside of that band. If they fall outside the band, they're included. If they fall within the band, then they are excluded. And then you're left with a simplified line. This Vallingham's algorithm progressively removes points with the least perceptible change. For example, if we start with these points here, and we compute triangles for all of these, then we remove the triangle with the smallest area, namely this purple one here, and then do the process again, and remove the triangle with the smallest area, this green one, and then again, the same process, we're left with these three points to approximate these original six points. That's the gist of Viz Vallingham's algorithm for line simplification. MapShaper has a simplify feature. You click this button here, and then click apply. Then you get this slider that you can tweak to specify how simplified you want it to be. See, this is too much simplified, and this has a lot more detail than we need. So you can just go by eye and, you know, pick somewhere in the middle that has enough detail for your needs. Sometimes there are line intersections, and if there are, you can just click Repair. This piece by Jason Davies illustrates pretty clearly that Viz Vallingham's algorithm does happen to introduce line intersections, and some additional steps need to be taken to avoid intersections. And then you can click Export, and then select the TopoJSON file format, and then click Export here. Now we've got our simplified TopoJSON file. This file ends up only half a megabyte, whereas the original shape file was six megabytes. From here, you could publish this TopoJSON file into a GitHub gist, just like you would for a CSV file, and then import it from there into your code. That's how you can get geospatial data ready for visualization with React and D3 or web technologies in general. This is the first step towards visualizing this data.